this party. Amen. Amen. Amen for you. Amen to Prophetess Kid. Yeah. Amen. 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 for you. Amen to Minister Michael. Yeah. Amen. And the other preachers in the house. And other ministers and other preachers. God bless you, woman of God. Anybody else? Can I get one of them on this side? Can I get another one on this side? <laughs> amen. Amen. But by the end of the day, uh -huh. uh, we just bless God. Amen. For allowing us to be here on this morning. Yeah. Amen. I count it to be a privilege to be counted worthy to stand before you. Amen. There is no other place that I'd rather be than but be in the will of God. Amen. And it is the will of God that I be here on this Amen. morning. We thank God for Apostle and, and Prophetess Mother being with us Amen. on today. Amen. When we came in, I have something about the elders. Amen. I grew up amongst so many. Amen. In the churches of God in Christ. Amen. We had so many in the church, amen, and I looked at her, I look at Mama Snow, they're looking all sniffy, <laughs> amen, looking all good, with the nails all done up, and just smiling, I'm like, look up there, amen, and it just blesses me real good, amen, to see how, how God has kept her. Truly, I count it a privilege to be here once again. And I just come to tell you something good about God. Amen. 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 I, I, I agree with Amen, Minister Michael. Nothing that I've done so good within myself. Because yes. I still sometimes operate yes. in flesh. Yes. I still sometimes have to ask God to forgive me. Uh -huh. Amen. But I stand, I stand, amen, just being here excited about God on this morning. And if you got your Bibles with you, come and go with me briefly. Amen. And I don't have, I will say quickly, but I don't know. Amen. To the book, amen, of Isaiah. Amen. We ask that you go with me to the, and while you find in Isaiah, the 60th chapter, amen. I, I had to sit there and, okay, God, what you want me to do? <laughs> amen. Because prophets went on up in Mark on me on this morning. Amen. I'm like, okay, so what you want me to do? So we're going to look briefly at the book of uh, Isaiah, the 60th chapter. We say amen when you have it. But yeah. while you get find it, we're going to go to God in the word of prayer. Father God, in the precious and matchless name of Jesus, oh, yeah. God, as we come before you, God, I pray for now, God, as I decrease, God, that you increase your yeah. and in the you, for now, God. Yeah. So this time, this place, and this setting, God, for this yes, your people yes, that have yes. ever here on this morning, God, God, we pray even now, God, that they have already been blessed, God, by the end of the day, God, that you have done just what you want to do in them and for them in this place, God. God, don't let our coming be in vain on today, God. God, we pray even now, God, that you just bless the fatherance of this service, God, that you anoint the fresh, God. And Father God, I just thank you and I bless you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. 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 Isaiah 60th chapter, verses 1 through 3. Amen. Arise, shine, for the light is come. Oh, yes. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. And the Gentiles shall come to the light, and the kings of the bright to the brightness of thy rising. Amen. Look at your neighbor and just simply say, Arise, women of God. Arise, women of God. Amen. Amen. I bless God for the invitation, Apostle, to come and minister. Amen. And I thank God for your theme on this year. Amen. Because a lot of times we don't allow ourselves to move into the things of God and move how God will for us to move because sometimes we just won't move and sometimes we just lay dormant and lay stagnated and be stagnated to the things of God. Mm -hmm. Because we sometimes won't allow ourselves to grow mm -hmm. because we won't allow ourselves to move into the place that God has caused Amen. us to move into. Mm -hmm. In the early part of this year, and I thank God for Minister Michael being transparent because that's just me. Mm -hmm. Amen. I get blessed sometimes by being transparent because I overcome I sometimes I'm overcome and I overcome it that way. And I was thinking early on this year, amen, and as we was moving into the beginning of the year, and the Lord spoke and told me, he said, David, it's a pivotal time that you expect the unexpected. 
Now I took him and I ran with that like a hot potato. I was so excited, I was so excited because I just knew that something great was coming my way. Mm -hmm. I just knew the blessings of the Lord was about to overrun me over and overtake me. I just knew I was getting ready to get that new car I wanted. Uh -huh. I just yeah. knew, I just knew, I just, yeah. I just moved into another house and relocated. Uh -huh. I just knew I was going to get me a new car and put in that driveway. I just knew it, it went in my mood, Pastor. <laughs> Anyway, all in the clothes, Lord Jesus. I called a woman from Burlington. I said, come on, girl, I got something for you. It took her an hour to drive to my house. Amen. And she sat there in my den and she went through all of it. I'm like, okay, God, you told me to give it away. And I just knew that God was getting ready to replenish. Yeah. And God was getting ready to give me all this stuff all over again. And I would just, I would just have to go lucky, expect the unexpected. Yeah. I was looking for a check in the mail, uh -huh. unexpected. I was looking for increase to overtake me. Yeah. I, I'm a preacher now. I, I, I just got to go with me. And I just was looking for all of that good stuff. Yes. <laughs> By February the 28th, my world was upside down. Uh, I heard Tasha Carl say, you make me smile even when my world is upside down. Mm -hmm. When I tell you, amen, for the last five months, I've been through hell and high water. I've been trying to survive this thing called life. Yes, yes, I've yes. Been try and I play with the kids sometimes at, at, um, at daycare. And we love to play Uno, amen, if anybody remember that game of familiar with them. And, and a lot of times they be like, I bet you got a puck four. I said, baby, I ain't got nothing good in my hands. But I'm going to play the hand that was dealt to me. I come to realize in life that we got to play the hand that's dealt with yes. us. And I got to give us the strategy yes, yes. to make that hand win. Yes. If you ain't got no change of car thing in your hand, if you ain't got no plug twos, if you ain't got no skip use and reverses, you got a bad hand. And you sit up there trying, uh huh, am I gonna win in this game? And that little six year old, I'm gonna win, I'm gonna beat you. I mean, they be tripping out on me. I got a four year old can play real good and the chick know how to cheat now. She's gonna go inside the deck and pull that plug. I said, you know what? I saw you. But I'm still beat you. I'm gonna beat you because you're trying to cheat me. Sometimes we have to tell the devil, I'm gonna beat you because you're trying to cheat me. Out of what God tells me to do. Amen. Come on, somebody, and tell him thank you. Thank you, Lord. Hi, everybody. You know what? These last five months have been so hard on me. I've had, I've cried. I've had some restless nights. I've had some sleepless nights. God gonna do it. I'm like, okay, God, the man of God, I spoke. I'm learning. 
I'm learning. I'm learning to be obedient, child. Woo, Jesus. This thing right here that have taught me, sis, how to obey my husband. I'm just, I'm being transparent. <laughs> I said, I'm not going to do it. It was okay going through the wedding vows, mama. <laughs> but I told mama, I'm not going to say I'm going to obey her name. <laughs> My mama being a big missionary that she is in the church. Uh -huh. She took me in that back room. She said, let me tell you something, daughter. I know you think you're wrong. But you cannot stand there and do those vows and don't say you're going to obey that man. I'm like, but I don't want to say it, mama. She said, but it's written in the vows. But I don't want no man to think that I got to obey them. But it's written in the vows. And because I love the Lord, <laughs> because I told God I'll do what he said do, uh -huh. yeah. uh -huh. Uh -huh. I had to stay in that little room that she had took me to. And I had to have me a little pity party by myself. And then, but when I came out, I said, okay. When the minister say, love, honor, and obey, I'm like, love, honor, and obey. It was a hard thing for me to do. Been there and done that. That's why it was so hard. But I learned to obey him the more since I've been going through all of this. That's why I come to realize that all things are going to work for my good. Uh -huh. I'm rising up out of this. I'm coming up out of all of this calamity. I'm coming up all of this, all of these problems. Why? Because God got is God got all of this under control. I come to realize, women of God, in order for us to get arise, we got to get up out of what we at. In order for me to get here this morning, when I looked at that woman, I could see the sun beaming out. I said, "Oh, it's time to get up." I looked at the clock, it was 7.30, I said, well, I don't know what's left. Because that's not usually me. Mm -hmm. But I got up and I got up and I made myself available to come here. It means to spring up, I didn't just get up. When I looked at that sunbeam and I had to spring up, sometimes in the spiritual world, we got to spring up to the things of God. When the enemy comes and tap us and knock on our door, we got to spring up out of it. If not, he's going to kill us in it. Yes, yes. We got to learn to spring up. Yes. We got to learn to grow up. The woman of God told us on last night, it's time to grow up. Yes. In this thing we call Christian walk, sometimes we got to grow up. Paul lets us know that we are children. Yes. We give you milk when you need milk. But hope, come on, somebody. Yes. It's time with, at the daycare. Right. Right. Prime example. Right. I give them what they call that infamil and that all of that other kind of formula up until they get 12 months old. About uh -huh. 11 and a half, or maybe 11 and 11 and a half months old. Uh -huh. Then we try to transform them into whole milk. Uh -huh. Transition them into whole milk. Uh -huh. Why? Because whole milk now got something else inside it that if meal and all of the and ice meal and all the other stuff don't have. Uh -huh. It got a different set of nutrients. So we as women of God, when we're born in a when we're going through a transition in our spiritual world, if we want to arise and do the things of God, we're gonna have to spring up, we're gonna have to grow up, and we're gonna have to stop drinking that little milk. And Paul says, I eat meat. Yes, yes. I know that's right. Not no pure meat. Uh-huh. That's right. Coarse meat. Uh-huh. <laughs> Something good for you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Took me 54 years to learn how to eat a steak. I always wanted mine well done, mama, because I ain't want to see no blood in it. I ain't want to see nothing read about it. Mm -hmm. But my son, all the way from Georgia, came to sit next to me at a dinner on last Saturday and say, No, Pastor, don't eat it like that. You're taking all the flavor out, all the nutrients out, get it medium well. So I made myself go eat on Sunday. I want me a medium well today. <laughs> didn't know nothing about no medium well because I didn't want to see no blood. I know that's right. I said, give me a medium well. It was so juicy. It was so good. Uh -huh. But I got it that way because I wanted to see how I do. Uh -huh. It did more for me than, it, than that T-bone well done because I didn't eat half of the T-bone. Right. 
But I said that to say this, when Paul tells us that we got to grow up, yeah. That's true. We, got, we can't just always drink milk. No. And we're going to rise up and do the things God calls us to do. We're going to have to start eating the poorest things in this world. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. We're going to have to start eating that hard stuff. Because yeah. the enemy ain't going to, he not he going to bring it to your heart. And you better know what to do with it when he bring it to you. Oh, come on, somebody and tell him thank you. Come on, somebody and tell him thank you. So we got to understand that all things will work together for the good of you that love the Lord. And I come to realize, and one other thing before I leave my notes, because I always do. I heard Bishop Jake say one thing. He said, when you face your greatest opposition is when you're closer to your biggest miracles. How many you know that God is in the miracle blessing time right about now? He's releasing miracles all over the land. In order for us to be, in order for, for us to rise up and do the things of God, we got to look for the miracle inside you. And I say that to say this because a lot of us count ourselves out because we can't do it like the next person. Right, right, right. But God didn't call you to do it like the next person. God didn't call me to do it like, like the great one leader by him. Thank God for her. God did not call me to do it like Cheryl Brady. Thank God for her. God didn't call me to do it like Apostle Tapper. Thank God for her. God didn't call me to do it like Prophetess. Thank God for her. God calling you to do what he wants you to do in the kingdom of God. That's why he said, rise. The glory of God has come upon you. Come on. We're going to go to our scripture text so we can get about here. He in the book of Isaiah. And glory be to God, I love Isaiah so much because there are so many wonderful things, amen, that Isaiah teaches us in his book. But in this particular chapter, we know that the, the children have gone through so many things uh, and so much had taken place, so much of, so many calamities, so much of calamity had taken place. The, the land was desolate and everything was coming against him. But in this particular, in this particular book, I hear Isaiah telling the children, he said, arise. Come on, somebody. He says, shine, for the light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness of the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. We got to be in a place and a time in our Krishna walk that we got to know that God got our back. Uh, preach the message not long ago. He got this. Uh, whatever you're going through or whatever you encounter, you got to know that God got your cup. Yes, yes, whatever yes. you're dealing with, he got your back. Yes. Uh, whatever you're going through, God is showing up just for you. Yes. Uh, oh, come on, come on. We're yes. not going to leave here the same. Because yes. uh, we're going to come to realize that God got our back. Yes. Uh, whatever we're going through, he got us covered. Uh, he telling them, he said, arise. Uh, we're coming up out of this dry land. Yes. We're coming up out of calamity. We're coming up out of our problems. We're coming up out of our situations. All we got to do is be willing in our spirit to arise and get up out of it. He said, come on somebody. Arise for the light. It's shining upon you. Women of God, God light is shining upon you all today. All you got to do is arise in the light of God, in the glory of God. Oh, come on somebody. And the scripture goes on to say, he said, it's time Get up. Huh? We've been going through long enough. Huh? We've been suffering long enough. Huh? We've been in we've been in exile long enough. Huh? We've been on the back burner long enough. Huh? We've been cast down long enough. Huh? We've been talked about long enough. Huh? We've been kicked to the curb long enough. Huh? It's time to arrive. Huh? Anybody been talked about lately? Huh? Anybody been kicked to the curb? Huh? Anybody been pushed back? Huh? But I still say, huh? It's time to arrive. Huh? Oh, look. 
catch your neighbor and say they can't comprehend you. They can't comprehend you. Because the glory of God is upon you. They can't comprehend your next move because the glory of God is shining over you. They can't comprehend your next thought because the glory of God is all over you. They don't know what you're going to do next. Oh, they're trying to figure you out. Anybody, anybody at that place in their life where the enemy is trying to figure you out. Your co your coworkers are trying to figure you out. But they can't figure you out because you're hid in the glory. You're hidden in the light. Anybody feel that you're hidden in God's light? Oh, just stay right there. Because it's the glory of God that's upon you. He said, for behold the darkness shall cover the earth. And this is the one thing I like about it. I said the darkness shall cover the earth. And gross darkness. In other words, it's going to be darker than you think. But one thing about God's people, the light is shining up. Upon us, we can go where we want to go. We can do what we want to do. Why? Because the light illuminates our path. The light directs our path. The light takes us into hidden places. The light takes us into places. Oh, come on and tell me, thank you. Go stop me. Shut up the earth. But the Lord shall rise upon thee. And his glory shall be seen upon thee. Yes. <laughs> oh my God. And his glory mm -hmm. shall be seen uh -huh. upon thee. Yes. Anybody believe that on this hand? Yes. 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 You didn't just come in here just to come in here. That's right. But you was you was pulled by the light. Yeah. Yes. All right now. Yes. You was pulled by the light. Yes. You felt that there was going to be something inside of here yes. that you would need to help yes. propel you yes. into that next place. To help push you yes. into that next place. To help lift you up to go into that next place. That's why you got up and you came in here because you feel like God has something inside of this place on today that will move you into that next move of your life in God. Anybody get ready? Your neighbor say, so there is the next move. There is the next move. Oh, yes, it is. Ask me how I know. Ask us how we know. Minister. Ask us how we know prophets. Because we had to get out of that move that we was in. To get in that next, next move to overcome where we was at. If we follow in our prophets, wouldn't be able to move into that next move. That's right. That's right. That's right. Honey, we used to sing a song years ago. How I got over. There you go. My soul. My soul looked back in one. Why? Because that problem that you left behind could have taken you out. Yeah. If your soul didn't look back. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, somebody. My soul looked back in one. Yeah. 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 I'm stuck right there. Stop 
passion. Because when it's all over, my soul, he already told us that he's not going to put no more on us than we can bear. Oh, but when it comes upon us, sisters, we try to rise and the situation get heavy. And we trying to pull ourselves up and that situation get heavy. Huh? Oh, on day one, you trying to move up huh? and that situation get heavy. You trying to move a little bit further huh? and that situation get heavy. Huh? But how many of you know huh? the scripture read on this morning, huh? great is he that is in us huh? than he that is in me. Huh? Oh, come on somebody. Huh? The devil is a lie. Huh? He's great in me. Huh? And because he's great in me, huh? I can do all things. Huh? I can push. Thank you, Lord. It got to go. Hallelujah. It got to go. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Reading in the book. I finished up. Reading in the book. And it just blessed me real good. In the book of Psalms. And the thing that in the midst, I'm still in it. You can't tell it. But I'm still in my problems. In my troubles. You said drugs went for three years. Mine might go that long too. But I ain't worried about it. Mm -hmm. Because Psalms 2 said to declare the decree. Uh -huh. yes. Yes. yes, it did. Yeah. 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 Yes, mm -hmm. To declare the decree. Oh, yes. In other words, in order to declare the decree, right. we got the first right of the decree. Uh -huh. yes. and, and just like he told Rebecca, write the vision. Yes. We got yes. to write the decree. Uh -huh. And we got to write it in a way that God understands our writing. And when we write the decree, and then when we speak our signature of a decree, and what is our signature in the Holy Ghost, uh, and then we can declare the decree in the Holy Ghost. And it's got to come to pass. It's got to come to pass. Anybody willing to declare the, the decree on today? Oh, it's got to come to pass. It's got to come to pass. We got to learn to arise. Yes, yes. Whatever it takes, it might take something different for you right. than it took for any of the rest of us. Right. 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 Yeah. I cried, I said, mm -hmm. I called a few people, yes, I did. Didn't want to tell a vision of hope, but I had to. Mm -hmm. Didn't know I was, I was at the house said, look, we can close the ministry down now. This is what's going on. Mm -hmm. Um, we could just close the ministry down. It would have been easy for me to go and somebody out of church and sit on the back of the pew. Mm -hmm. Oh, Jesus. I said, I'll be the usher. <laughs> it would have been easy. Uh -huh. I said, whatever y'all want to do, pastor's ready to do it. It, done, it. At that point, it didn't even matter. I was hurt, sis. One girl said, you quit and ain't no option. In other words, you just can't quit. The ministry goes on. Mm -hmm. We was in need of some funds. By two o'clock the next day, it was all in my hand. Thanks. All right. So I had to rise up out of that place I was in. I had to get up out of that car. I had to, I had to brought me some liquor wine and everything at <laughs> my own. Jersey. I thought I would go to the club, huh? Mm -hmm. so I dressed up, parted myself down, went to the club. Everybody on the on the floor dancing. It was a little <laughs> old lady, that mother, excuse me. She about your age, but it's it was good. Cause that sister, uh, Michael Jackson, had the song Bad then. Right. That sister was bad. <laughs> she took the flow. And all I could do was stand back, cause this is what it's all about. I'm like, wow, I mean, she that little one with the dance. She took over the little dance floor. And I'm like, okay. Because I was used to my own little private setting. I get me a couple of wine coolers. <laughs> the Melvin Bill Kennedy jeans. Because, you know, we wasn't supposed to listen to music. So I gave a little instrumental on Kennedy G. Uh -huh. Mother and Daddy think it's praise music. Which <laughs> Give him a little Kenny G. Uh-huh. Give him a little wine cooler. Sit with you into music. <laughs> I be in my zone. Because <laughs> I didn't know what to part. I didn't know how to part. I didn't know how to do that stuff. Went to the club and I'm, I'm at the door. First, when I went in, this is the entrance, where's the exit? Because mm -hmm. I've heard so many bad things happen in that club. Mm -hmm. I need to see the exit door. 
I could see no exit door that night. I told my dad, I'm ready to go. Because if anything went down, I had, mm, I'm ready to go. I went three times. It was over. <laughs> Couldn't do it no more. It wasn't funny. It wasn't in me. I wasn't called to it. So I had to move away from it. Uh -huh. Because see, there was a light shining over my life. Uh -huh. It was a, like the glory of God was shining over me, but I didn't understand it at the time. I wanted to be like the world. Uh -huh. So when this thing hit me, I was ready to tell me the proud of party. Uh -huh. I didn't want to be bothered by nobody letting me cry in my own bed. Uh -huh. I don't want to ask no phone. I don't want to talk to nobody. Just leave me alone. Sometimes we just want to we just want to hibernate. Uh -huh. But sometimes in order for God's life. Shine, you're gonna have to get up out of that thing. You're gonna have to walk in it. Oh, oh my darkness is all around you, and gross darkness are all around you. You got to still understand that God light is shining upon you, regardless of what the situation is. Yes. I had to come to realize that oh, there was something inside of me that's bigger than all of this, that's greater than all of this, and I'm gonna stand up in the midst of it. Stood up in the darkness and you're like, okay, where am I going? Yeah. And something just tell you, you just go left. Nobody, you. Uh, yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. Because there's something that illuminates inside of you that can that can navigate you through your situation. Yeah. Someone asked me yesterday, Pastor, you doing better? I'm doing fine. But see, I see the light over there. They say, you see the light. I see it. I'm not yet at it, but I see it. And because I see it, I'm headed toward it. Sometimes you have problems in your life, women of God. If we got to rise to the things of God, you got to see that light in your life and say, I'm moving to it. Oh, come on, somebody and tell God, thank you. I remember in the word of God, not too for real. I remember it, and it just comes in my spirit. When David was in the cave, amen, the Bible said he was in the cave of a doula. Amen. He was hiding from the enemy. Sometimes the enemy will cause us to go in a cave in our life. Huh? And we be hiding from the things of God. But the Bible said that the men of God came to David and told David to get up out of the cave. Huh? You got work to do. Huh? Oh, come on, somebody. Huh? Tell your neighbor, say, get up huh? out of your cave. Huh? There is a light out there for you to move to. Get up. Come on, somebody. David had to get up and move into the light. He got to get up and move into the light and allow God's light to illuminate the things in our life because it is God. Oh, yes, it's an awesome thing. I hope I said something to each of you all today. Amen. That will empower you to get up. Amen. To arise yes. for the glory of God oh, yes. is yes. upon yes. you. Yes. Yes. And all I could think about when I initially got the invitation was to mm. Talithia Kuma. Get up, arise. The people thought she was dead. Yes. Just like a lot of people think everything about you is dead. Uh -huh. But you better tell Talithia Kuma and you to arise uh -huh. and get up. Ain't nothing dead about me. Come on. I am alive. Yes. The woman of God said they was just having a party. They just, what well, the Bible tells us to rejoice when they leave out. Mm -hmm. Oh, but it wasn't, it wasn't her time. Right. That's why Jesus said, oh, come on, Talithia. Come on. Get up. Arise. Yes. You have to tell yourself. Sometimes we have to minister to our own selves. Yes. yes. Don't we love it? Yes. Sometimes we have to tell that Talithia and us, get up. Yes. Arise up out of these things. Because God got need of you. Preach from the book of Timothy. And I am too, true and through. Preach from the book of Timothy. Um, stop that happy business. I feel good. I done. What is it? Relax. I done decreased and digest and stuff. But preach your message from the book of Timothy. What Paul told Timothy, when Paul was talking to Timothy, preaching to Timothy, about some things that he was in need of. And he told him, he says, go get Mark, for he is profitable 
to be in ministry. Mm -hmm. Some of you are moms in ministry. You are profitable to whatever ministry you are in for the ministry thing. For all of you that are members here at Blessings of God Ministry, you are moms. Chief Apostle needs you, for you are profitable for the ministry. So you need to rise up to your calling. Rise up to your, your walk in God. Rise up to the things that God has placed in your hand to do. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, we are Jack of many trades. Yes. Ambassador of them all. Mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> we can usher. Yeah. We can collect the offering. Mm -hmm. We can sing what we have to get released. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, we can make whatever music we can make if we have to. Mm -hmm. But when God sends some of you in as moms, as helpers, we want you to rise to the occasion yeah. and say, Pastor, let me be the praise and worship leader. Right. Okay, right. do what you do. <laughs> Let's make it happen. Right. Pastor, let me be on the financial committee. Okay, we're going to look at it. Pastor, let me be the usher. Let me do this. Let me, let me operate in the ministry of health. Right. Let me do this. Arise to your call. Arise to your occasion. Yes, for you are profitable for the ministry. All right. If you arise, women of God, if you arise to the things that God has called you to, and you have spoken to your pastor, God is pulling me to do this in the church. Mm -hmm. And your pastor said, okay, we can, we can work with that. Do it. Hallelujah. And do it to the best mm -hmm. of your ability. Yes. Allow God to use you mm -hmm. in that way. Because in that way, the ministry is moving forward. Mm -hmm. In order for God to bless the head, and you standing in line to be blessed too. We want to know that when the oil flow, it's gonna flow on a good ground. Yeah. Ground that's gonna be profitable for the ministry. Yeah. Oh, come on and clap your hands. Yeah. And bless the Lord. Come on and bless the Lord. Everybody standing. Everybody standing. Come on and bless him. Come on and bless him. Oh, come on and bless me. I dare you look at your neighbor and tell him to rise. Tell him to rise, woman of God. Arise, woman of God. Arise, woman of God. Go and tell somebody else. Arise, woman of God. Come on, tell somebody else. Arise, woman of God. Arise to the glory of God. Arise. That's all right, brother. That's all right, son. All right, you already been in my spirit. Oh, come on. You think you, you think you think you are outcast and you're the only man here. But that's all right. You're here for a reason. You're here for a purpose. That's all right. I, I, when I saw you, when I walked past you, the Lord told me to tell you, you in the right place at the right time. You in the right place at the right time. I guess you were sitting like, I'm the only man here. I'm the only one here. But that's all right. It's okay. A lot of times you might be the only man there. So arise to the occasion that God put in you. Arise to the thing that God is building in you. You seem like you was enjoying yourself. Huh? But arise to the things that God put in you. Because he put greatness in you. Come on, do you believe that? There is something awesome inside of you that God is getting ready to pull out of you just to be possible for the kingdom of God. Do you believe that? Clap those hands and tell God. Counted you out. Many say you will all amount to nothing. But God said you greater than many. You are much greater than many. Oh my God. Oh, it's okay. It is okay. You don't fit in with everybody. But everybody don't fit in with you. Yes, he's the urge. Is this your son? Come here, baby. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, 
you stand right there, mama coming to you. <laughs> mama coming to you this time. Yes. Uh huh, uh huh. Come on, put your hands in mama's hands. No, put your hands in mama's hands. Lay your hands over mama. Lay them up like that. This is what I see in the spirit. Now you put your hands in mama's hands. That's okay, that's mama. Because what I see in the spirit, God said, you put your hands in my hands. I'm going to lead you to that place that men say you can't go. God said, you put your hands in my hands. My hands is a symbol of God's hands. My hands is just a symbol of God's hands. You put your hands in the master's hands. God's going to take you bigger and, and above that you can even pray that you can make it to. God's going to take you to greatness.